welcome to Cards by Kate Fletcher. Today I'm going to do a really quick project share and then I'm going to attempt to make a shaker card with my poorly hand. So this is what I made. Um, I did start this before the operation and then I finished it very slowly um, since last Wednesday when I had my operation. So as you can see it's for a baby. I absolutely love these tiles. These are by Trimcraft. Um, I think they actually come under the Dovecraft umbrella, but aren't they beautiful? And then I've used a pad I got in um, LA, actually. This is a baby pad, and it's super cute. This is a ribbon from the works that I've had a long time, but it's a little mini album. The base cardstock, look how beautiful this is. This is by Crafter's Companion. Um, it's the Cintura Pearlized cardstock i absolutely love this i've got it in a few colors um and it only gets used for very special people because i'm really tight with it because i love it so much and i literally will just get out and stroke it occasionally i just think it's the most beautiful cardstock look at the sheen on it so that's what i've used on the card so i also i don't have any eyelet eyelets even so that there is Miri card. I was quite chuffed with myself for coming up with that idea. So then you open it up and look how cute. I love it. I'm so happy with this. I'll open this one to show you. Um, this is ribbon that I got from Hobbycraft. I've had it quite a long time. Um, but I thought it would work nicely in this album. And then I'll just flick through these for you. They are double-sided. Look how cute. I'm well chuffed with this. I've never made one of these albums before. And I'm so happy with how this has come out. I love it. Isn't that just gorgeous? I think I might have to make myself one of these. That's how much I love this now. And it was so much fun to make. I'm not going to try and do it up again now. So yeah, I just wanted to share that with you. If you want to see the paper pad in its entirety, let me know and I'll do that in a separate video for you. But um, yeah, really happy with how that's come out. So that's my first mini album. And today I'm going to make a shaker card. So this is a shaker card I made for my husband for Valentine's Day. Um, I think it's really really cute and this is the kind of style I'm going to make today. So the set I'm going to use is this baby set which is I think it's um, X cut or whatever it's called but it's really really cute and I'm going to try something new. So in a previous video uh, from I think it was last week might have been this week. Anyway, I said how I didn't really get fun foam. So, I thought, look, I've never opened this. I thought today, instead of using double-sided tape, I would attempt to make the shaker card using fun foam. Because I figured, if I use fun foam instead of double-sided tape, hopefully... These um, sequins and stuff will shape better without getting caught up so much. Because can you see there? They've like caught on the tail a little bit. And I thought it's a great way to use this bulk of fun foam that um, I bought. And yeah, it was only like three quid in B&M. But I don't like buying stuff and then not using it. So we're going to try and make a card out of fun foam. Now because... I am still in quite a lot of pain. I'm using a pre-folded card blank for this. I've also pulled a couple of paper packs. I've pulled this one, which was from the works. It's a really cute one for baby cards because it's got the sheep, it's got the little rain cloud, so on. And I've got my Bell and Boo out just because I quite like this rabbit design. Um, this is going to be for a baby shower, as I said. So I love those two paper pads, and that's what I'm going to be using on the card. Um, 
and I'll talk you through what I'm doing it as I do it. I'm going to use these sheep because I think they're so, so cute. So I'm going to put them as the base layer on the card. So that will be what you see when you look through. And then I'm fairly sure I'm going to use the rabbits. But I just want to check that there's nothing else that I like better. So that's the rabbits. Let's just check there's nothing else I like better for the top really quick. Just going to have a quick flick through these. Mind you, that is pretty cute. That like patchwork, but it's pink for a girl and I'm, I'm needing like blue for boy. So that's quite cute. But no, I like the rabbits better. More bunnies. No, I'm going to use the rabbits. I like those little rabbits. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to stick the sheep to the base of the card. Um, there's probably going to be a fair bit of stopping and starting on this video uh, because like for my big shot, I'm not going to bring that in just because I think I'd struggle with my hand to cut on um, on camera because I'm having to at the moment develop new ways to do stuff while I'm still in a lot of pain um, so I'll be cutting off camera I'll be trimming stuff off camera um, but I'll tell you what I'm doing so that if you're wanting to have a go at this yourself um, you know like what to do and where I'm just having trouble getting my glue out here I really want to try um, Kalau glue um, a lot of people use it, um, I haven't got any, I haven't tried it, but I would quite like to, so that's probably an adhesive I'm going to look into later in the year. I know uh, Laura, Mrs Stationery and stuff, she bought some, kind of recently actually, and then she didn't get on with it and she sold it in a de-stash, but... Um, I'm trying to be really good, so I kind of didn't buy it, but I do want to try Kalau, so at some point this year I will try it. Right, I'm going to now just trim this down quick and I'll be right back. Right, I've trimmed this down so it now fits perfectly on the card. Next thing I need to do is choose my fun foam, so I think I'm going to use blue just because I'm doing a blue card. I'm just going to use one piece, that's how thick it is, can you see? So it's quite thin, so I think what I'm going to do is use two pieces, one on top of the other, just to make sure. Mm, although one might work, look. Well, it's not going to focus, is it? There you go, sort of. So it might work, but I think just for this time, because I've not done this before, uh, I'm going to put two pieces on top of each other. So I'm going to now cut this foam to um, probably just a bit smaller than the card base. And I'm actually going to see if I've got a die that will do it for me just to save my hand. So this is the biggest square die that I've got. I think it's by um, Simply Creative, uh, who I bought a lot when I first started out and it's one I've had since I started so this measures about four and three quarters squared I would say but it does give me quite a nice border all the way around so I think this is the one I'm going to use so I'm now going to go and cut two squares from this and I'll be right back right there is my two squares that I've cut out now if you're a regular on my channel you will know I never throw anything away so these bits are going in my scraps box and I'm going to use those to die cut some of my smaller dies I think for future use and it was actually oddly satisfying cutting this so if this works that's gonna be awesome so when this is all done these will be glued together on here 
gives us a good thickness and then we'll have some paper over the top okay so now it's worth pointing out actually I do only have a regular big shot I don't have the A4 one I don't have a Gemini or Scan and Cut or a Cricut or you know any of the other ones and the dye and the foam went straight through the big shot I didn't have any problems I haven't broken my machine so there you go if you buy fun foam from B&M it will go through your big shot and the dye I don't know what I've just double it or that is as you can see absolutely fine so there we go if this works this is going to be a great use for this foam foam fun foam sorry and I'll use it all up doing this and then probably never buy it again anyway now I need to choose which of these super cute dies I'm going to be using on this card as you can see my die storage system that I have started on is being well used and I love the magnets stick to this table as well so nothing's gonna go anywhere right so let's use the pram because I think that's really cute and I quite like the stalk with the baby that would make a nice one and then I just need something up there oh look there's two stalks uh, maybe we'll go with no that that's good we'll go with that one and then baby grow you can't go wrong with a baby grow can you So I'm going to cut those out of my fun foam and I will be right back. I'm going to do it out of both squares. Right, so I've just cut through both sheets. I put them both as they were. Um, I did change these around a bit when I got to the dye machine just because I realised I had them on here. Like cutting edge up and obviously I had to put them cutting edge down but I ran them through together I had no issues and I also now have I mean I could separate these but I actually quite like the effect of having them together so I already have some nice shapes for a future project or for my scrapbook so that worked quite nicely <clears throat> so I think to put these together what I'm going to use is red liner tape because again, if you follow my channel regularly, you will know I absolutely love this stuff. It is so strong um, and it just, I haven't found anything, it doesn't stick. So I'm really hoping this isn't the first thing. Um, so I think to start with, I'm just going to put it all around the edge. Um, I'll probably use my wet glue as well, just to go around the edges of the... Um, like the pram and the baby grow and then I'll just put strips of red tape on here as well and then I will come back to you guys so far so good this was actually really easy to do especially with the lining up um, as I started to take the release papers off I was like oh my god what if I have to stick it in the wrong place because it's like uh, foam and it will pull out of shape if I try and release it but actually because I just had to match it up to the one below and like there's stuff like these little like indents can you see it was fairly easy to line them up and then worry about everything else um, and you're not going to see this bit because it's going to be covered so the fact it doesn't match up perfectly here isn't an issue but I think that's given me a nice bed to put um, sequins or something in there's quite I'm just trying to get to show you I mean it looks pretty deep I think that would be all right for just some little sequins and stuff um kind of playing with the idea of maybe doing a third layer um but I think I'm gonna leave it as it is because that's quite chunky already so I think what I'm gonna do next is just cut this sheet to size and then before I do anything else I'm going to then cut these shapes out of this one so that I know it all matches up for when I put it on top. Um, so I'm going to cut this to size and then I'll come back to show you how I'm going to work out 
where to place these on here to cut them out right if that makes sense so i won't be long right so that is now cut to size so i think the best way to do this if i put this on here kind of where i'm going to want it so it's got the nice even border all the way around and then i might just try and drop these through the die cut or position them underneath here so they're like in the right position so that one's going to go there-ish and then what i'm going to do is try and hold them in place with washi before i move anything <laughs> because otherwise i know exactly what will happen and I need him so it's probably not going to be 100% exact but it will probably be enough that it will work but we'll see all right let's just grab some washi Right, that's all stuck there on my washi. So I'm going to run it through the big shot and then I'll be back. Right, I'm going to peel this off as carefully as I can. I'm awful. I even saved my washi because I just think, well, it's still got some stick. You can use it for other run throughs and stuff. And look, I've also now got some cool little die cuts like I did with the foam. Oh, someone's exhaust noisy, eh? Don't know if you heard that. That was a very noisy exhaust that just went past my window. I love how you do one project in crafting, but you get future projects from it, if that makes sense. There we go. Okay, so that's how it's going to sit when it's all done. Um, I've got to put the sequins in next and glue the foam down. You can see the blue foam underneath, uh, but it's not the end of the world. I think it just adds it a little bit more definition. It's not going to bother me that much, I don't think. So let's grab some acetate. I'm going to get my embossing buddy as well. Um, I'm going to grab some sequins and I'll be right back. The acetate I'm using today is... This A5 one from Hobbycraft. I'm also going to use my embossing buddy. I'm going to just use that on the acetate just to try and prevent the um, sequins from sticking with static to the acetate because I've had that happen in the past and I discovered that by using the embossing buddy it kind of prevents it from happening. Um, I am going to use these little blue ones these larger purple ones i think the purple ones can go in the pram and then i've also grabbed out these dark blue ones here because they're nice and small and i don't want anything too large because uh, that's quite small and i'm not sure really how this is going to work with the stalk um so i might have to put like most of them in the wings and then just a couple in the nappy sack bit so let's carry on let's take that off for now so I think the first thing I'm going to do is just stick this to the base of the card. So I'll do that and then I'll be back. On the back I've used my red liner tape and I've also decided to use the wet glue after all. Uh, just around the edges of the shapes again just to make sure nothing's going to be able to escape. And then I just kind of eyeballed it. It's not as central as I would have liked but oh well. I'm sure this will still go on and I'm sure it'll still be all good. Yeah, so that's fine. Right, let's put the let's put the sequins in. I don't think the glue's really escaped, so I don't really have to worry about um them sticking to that. So I'm gonna put the purple ones in the pram just because they're a little bit bigger. I never know how many 
to put in in shaker cards like that shake so I'll leave it at that and then the really small blue ones maybe I'll put those in there that's quite a lot let's put those over there I want it to shake so maybe I don't need so many in that bit There's only a few there now, will that shake now? I don't know. Uh, I'm going to put a mixture in here as well. And then I'm going to open these ones up. And these ones can go... See how big these ones are. Whoa! That nearly went horribly wrong, didn't it? They're not huge. Put a few in there. Put a couple in there. Put a few more. Can't have enough, really. And then to store these, I'm just going to put them away and I will show you what I have started storing my sequins in. Right, I can't get them back in the bag, so I've just put them on the table. But this is what i've been using to store sequins in this is a baby food jar and these are great Let's see if i can get them in without dropping them on the floor um for sequins because they hold loads like this whole packet won't even fill this jar um, and they look so pretty sitting on my shelf. Like, look, that hasn't even barely made a dent in the jar. You see? Look, so much room left. <laughs> but um, it's just a really nice way to store my sequins. They look really pretty on the um, shelf. It's I like it because I'm reusing something I was going to... Well, I was going to recycle it anyway because I recycle glass. But um, I just love finding alternative storage things for my craft stuff. So, yeah, really happy that I can use my baby food jars to store my sequins in. Right, enough of that. Let's get rid of that for now. I need to cut my acetate to fit over this. I'm just going to see if I've got a scrap. Because a bit like... Um, my cardstock I don't throw anything away so I sort of do see now that's what I mean about static look that's just jumped up onto the acetate which is why I'm going to go over the acetate with the embossing buddy but I actually think I'm just going to cut a sheet down to size um and I think yeah I'm not going to use the die because I'm not convinced it would work great so I'm just going to cut it by hand um, so I'm going to cut this down and then I will be right back to you so to cut that to size all I did was I got the die back out I used some of that washi I had saved earlier I stuck the square die onto my acetate and I just cut round it with scissors and that's worked really really well so now I know that this will go over that no problems so I'm gonna wipe over the acetate with the embossing buddy to stop all of these little things jumping out onto my acetate and sticking to the top of it because I do want it to shake 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 Right, there we go. Probably don't need loads, but I just want to be sure. So now I'll be able to stick that over the top with... I'm going to use red liner tape because I'm going to cover it over anyway and you're not going to see it. So I will do that and I will come straight back to you. I don't know if you can see it, but instead of using glue around the edges of the shapes this time, I've just used extra red liner tape on the foam. And I've gone all around the edges of the foam with the red liner tape as well. I'm just giving my acetate one last going over with my embossing buddy, just because 
uh, earlier a couple of sequins did manage to jump up um, if anyone is interested the red liner tape I have used is about five mil in width um, and I got it from every crafts a pound so I'm just gonna pop this down and hope for the best really so the reason I didn't use my glue around the edges of the shapes i don't think the sequins are going to jump out really um but equally i remembered that the top sheet didn't quite sit flush and you could see through to the blue foam um and although that doesn't bother me much and although the um glue i've been using is dries clear i just thought on foam you might see the wet from where the glue had been um and i didn't want that so that's why I've done what I've done. Right, let's see. Yay, let it shake. It does what it's supposed to do. Okay, so now all I need to do is attach that bit on top. Look how cute that's going to be. So I'm going to, again, go back to my red liner tape just so it grabs real good on here. Um, I'm sure glue would attach to the acetate but I'd rather have the strength of the um, tape so I'm going to just go around the edges here and probably a little bit across here and then I'll be back I actually decided that because um, I'm sticking paper onto the acetate I didn't need to go crazy with the red liner tape again so I haven't gone all around I've just gone around the edges so let's try and get this on without ruining everything now. Yay! look how cute so we've got the rabbits here we've got the shapes we've got a shaker card that's not going to stick to the tape because we haven't really used any yeah you can see the foam underneath but it's not the end of the world you can sort of see the sheep underneath but not so much maybe next time i'll just use um plain card stock so i just need to put a sentiment on i might put a few of these sequins just around the outside um or I mean, we could, could use these and just kind of do like, oh, well, that's quite effective. Kind of do like an eclipse card, but with foam. Just, um, just have a play quick. So I think that's quite a cool effect, actually, because you've got the shaker card and then you've got the like almost eclipse feel to the card as well because the foam raises the um, cutouts and it kind of makes it feel like an eclipse card at the same time so now I just uh, I need to do a sentiment I'm just going to find a baby shower stamp and see what I can do so I have this stamp set by Card Making Magic um, it's got the word shower in it but there's no baby word which is bothering me a little bit uh i mean you could make it out of the words there obviously but um i might see if i've got another stamp that says baby or something like that and then see if i can put something together maybe so what i found is i have these uh alpha dies now this came with a die set that goes with this um range so it also has like this square thing um so i think what i'm going to do is cut out the word baby and put it up here and then i'll stamp the word shower and put that down there um and i think i'm gonna tr maybe try and put the the shower on a banner I need to have a look through and see what I can find. I had a really nice one in my Crafter's Companion Advent Calendar and I've been grabbing that a lot recently. So I'm going to see if that works down there. Um, if not, I could maybe do like a little 
tag flag type thing i don't know i'm gonna have a play and i'm gonna see what happens okay so nothing is stuck down yet um i have cut the baby out of the foam again and again i went through two layers the shower sign that is the crafter's companion um banner that i got in my advent calendar i love that i use it all the time i think that was probably the best dye i got out of it um but i'm now thinking do i heat emboss the world shower instead of having it stamped i've stamped it in memento ink i'm just thinking could i make it a bit softer um, and I did have to move the baby grow because it didn't then fit when I had the word baby. Um, and what I like about this banner is it does um, give you a bit of depth. I haven't put it on properly yet, uh, but you can see that bit's lifted, that side lifts as well. So I quite like it. I'm just wondering whether I need to change this sign somehow. I'll cut another banner out and heat emboss it and see which one I like best. So give me two seconds. Right, I have recut the banner and I have heat embossed it using um, Cosmic Shimmer Brilliant Sparkle Sea Turtle. I absolutely love this colour at the best of times. But let's see how it has worked for my baby shower card. Oh yeah. I like that so much better. It's just a bit softer and it's just that little bit of bling. I like that a lot better than I liked the black. It's not so severe. Okay, I'm going to get this all stuck down and I'll be right back. Okay, so that is the finished card. I'm not going to do anything else to it. Um, I'm quite pleased with this, to be honest, considering I've still got the poorly finger um it's held up quite well actually um really happy with how this has come out i found another use for the foam uh and i've got some lovely shapes as well now for scrapbooks and stuff but um yeah i think that's a great way of doing a shaker card it's a bit of faffing but do you know what when you use the double-sided tape that's faffy as well and it gunks up your scissors whereas this way your scissors um are saved because you're not having to constantly cut double-sided tape um fair enough you cut red liner tape but that's nowhere near as bad let's be honest so yeah really happy with this kind of tempted if i'm honest to get out my um spectrum noir sparklings and just go with the clear over the baby but I'm thinking that would probably be a bit too much. <laughs> there's bling on the shower sign and there's the sequins so that's probably enough. So I hope she likes it when she gets it. I hope you've enjoyed the video. A lot of you said you've struggled with fun foam so I hope this has given you an idea of how to use that and maybe give it a go. If you're a current subscriber thank you for sticking with me while I've had this slight finger issue um and please remember to give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed the video if you're new please hit the big red subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications um and i'll be back soon with more videos thank you very much for watching and i will be back soon bye for now